All right, stand by to go off. In three, two, one, go. Instead of just shifting your focus to the way you're gonna cross, can you watch the lane appear to a new spot? My name is Max Wassler. I'm gonna carry this with me. I'm 18 years old and a high school senior. I've been performing in musical theater since I was seven years old. That's 11 years, five stages, 24 shows. When it comes to musical theater, the actors, singers, and dancers on stage are greatly praised for their work. And don't get me wrong, they certainly deserve it. Every time I perform in a show, I am amazed on how much hard work the cast puts in to give the audience their best. But there is another side of theater that, in my opinion, is wildly unrecognized. I believe the people who really make the show happen are the artistic team, painters, builders, backstage, all the people who work off stage to make the performers on stage look and sound their best. Seeing this, I began to look into the backstage process of how a show is put together. I've been performing with Character Works Theatre for eight years and decided to interview staff members and volunteers working on the newest production, The Wizard of Oz. In the midst of doing this project, I also will be performing with the cast as the Scarecrow. In this movie, I'll be taking you step by step through the process of preparing a Broadway style musical. It's time to look behind the curtain. Before the rehearsals start, the artistic team must complete a number of pre-show tasks. The first is to cast the show. The team holds vocal, acting, and dance auditions and then calls back those they need to see again. When I watch auditions, I am thinking about all the parts of the show we need to cast and how to take this group that came to us and where people in that group could fall in. So when we watch our initial auditions, it really is just seeing who brings a lot of life and light to the stage, who kind of brings you into their story. It's all about storytelling. When casting a show, um, I try when possible to start with uh, the biggest role and then from that piece we build around so we could look at who did we like in these roles around that and then of the choices there what kind of makes the best unit. Within three days they have all their actors cast and are ready to schedule the rehearsal process. This is Becky McNamee, the director of the show. I sat down with her on week one to discuss what her role will be and what happens in the early stages of the show process. My name is Becky McNamee and I am the director of the show Wizard of Oz. I direct and choreograph various shows here and I like directing Wizard of Oz because it's such a classic and because it's one of those shows because the movie has been so influential and is so iconic and is such a classic there will be people of all ages in the audience. There are really very few shows that can hit people from 4 to 94 um, at the same time and so it's really special. One of the first things the cast does is something known as a read-through. I asked Becky to explain it. A read-through is when we sit down with the scripts open um, in chairs at a table and just read through the script. We read from the top to the bottom, we play the music during it, but there's no blocking. The purpose of a read-through is for everyone to sit down and see the whole story and understand their piece in it because we segment uh, rehearsal so much that if we don't start with what is the story we're telling and why is any given thing in this show, then it's harder when we we put the show together for the through line to come out. We don't want it to be segmented scenes. We want it to be one big picture. Not a whole lot of material is covered in week one, but not much can be covered. The actors don't receive their scripts until this week, and many of them don't know any of the songs. For the most part, week one consists of doing a read-through of the script and learning the music behind the largest number in the show. For Wizard of Oz, we learn the song sung by the ensemble when Dorothy, Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Lion first enter the Emerald City. 
The leads of the show do a small amount of blocking for a short scene, but most of the blocking occurs later in the process, when the actors are more familiar with the script. Blocking is very simply where the actors stand, where they move, and when they move there. Ideally, when an audience watches a show, they are not aware of blocking. That it should, it should seem so natural that they're not even aware that it happened. But being intentional with blocking can help create that story and that mood that you're going for just as much as any other piece. To Oz? To Oz. Wait till they both do them at the same time. While the actors start the rehearsal process, the builders began building the show's set pieces. I sat down with their head, Chris Spar, at the Character Works Warehouse to ask him about the work they do. My name is Christopher Spar. I am the master carpenter, which basically makes me the project manager for the show. Um, I manage paint, uh, the build, and the show, getting it uh, from the design to the build, getting it to the theater, uh, making sure it's up and safe and ready to go for the show, and then breaking it all down and do it again for the next show. Mr. Spar will meet with the other artistic team members, including Becky, to discuss where to go with the build. Typically, I will sit and meet with uh, the director and the artistic designer, and they'll come up with kind of a theme for the show, and then the three of us will sit down and we'll work through uh, their concept of what they want for the show, and then we decide what we can strike and what we can keep and go on with. And then, at some point, we come to some kind of loose agreement, and it goes into production at that point. My role in discussion is, uh, my first thing is safety. Um, I want to make sure that what we build is safe. I, I really, really try, it's not my vision, I'm just a builder and making sure it's safe and gets on site. So I really try to get inside their head and see exactly what they want, exactly what they're thinking. They'll present me with uh, like a, a production list of things that they're looking for and then we'll sit down and go through each each item and I'll ask them questions based on, you know, is this what you're looking for, is this what you're looking for? And that's sort of how I begin my process. Our set designer, I'll meet with him a couple times, talk about the needs of the show, share some pictures that really inspire me, go through and see what we actually need, and then he'll design um, actual pieces for the show and present that to me, and I'll approve that, and then we'll meet with construction and paint and go through that with them for their list. Once the design is determined and measurements are made, the build team gets to work constructing the set pieces. And they have to work fast. There are only nine weeks to get it done and moved into the theater. But before the sets are moved, they must be painted by the paint committee. My name is Becky Burns, and my role for this show is paint coordinator, um, scenic paint coordinator. So I um, organize the volunteer workers that we have to paint and try to make sure that we follow what the director and the scenic designer want for the show and paint all the sets. So I go through and pick colors. I think about what pieces need to be painted first, um, what pieces are going to take the longest to do, um, what pieces can be painted by um, people that have little to no experience, and then what needs to have more experience work done. Ms. Burns also meets with the directors to discuss what designs they have in mind and what colors they want to use. She then leads the paint committee, much like Chris leads the build committee, to paint these sets according to the director and scenic designer's ideas. Five, six, try again. Down, up, up, down, up, down, up, and down. Back at the rehearsal space, the actors are being taught some of the dance moves. These are created and taught by the show's choreographer, Jen Hammond. I sat down with her to ask how dance is incorporated in the show. My name is Jen Hammond, and I am choreographer for the shows in the West End primarily. In this show, I choreograph the dances for the Munchkins, the Aussians, and everyone in between. Down, up, down, up. So the crisper you make things, the better. Because then it'll In preparing to teach new material, I will look at the group that I have. I also have to think a lot about how much space I have and how much how much depth I get and what the set looks like. I'm I'm constantly asking for what is that again? You know, and how much do I have? Because I'm constantly forgetting that. I am definitely the person that has to see the pieces moving in front of me and figure it out from there. 
Um, here, I think there's so much to do with uh, physicality. So the scarecrow is like, he's got no bones and he's fallen all over the place because he just can't keep his legs underneath him. The Tin Man is made of tin, so he's pretty brittle in what he does. He'll be a stark contrast to the scarecrow. And then the lion, his coward, he's the cowardly lion, so Cowards aren't usually like, hey now, but he'll have his his into himself cowardly lion, but then king of the forest, he'll he'll open up and things will things will happen. Mm -hmm. Some of the material Jen teaches is easier than other material. For example, the song The Jitterbug is about an insect sent by the wicked witch that bites the main characters, causing them to dance uncontrollably. This dance is fast-paced and aerobic, making it more difficult than the other dances, and even more so when costumes are added. Not to mention, the actors are singing the entire time. But who teaches that music? None other than the music director, Morgan Day. My name is Morgan Day, and I am the music director for this show. How do you prepare for a show before the rehearsal process? I read the script, I listen to the soundtracks of the music, as many as you can find. Uh, and then just really read through the lyrics. Um, I really like the way that the lyrics work with the music and then I find out what the motifs are in the music and I understand what that's gonna sound like in the voices. And so I just do a lot of score study, score study, score study, um, mark up my music. And then while we're in process, then I have the students transfer that to their um, music as well so that we're communicating the same thing. I kind of prefer the big group numbers because I think one of my skills is um, hearing the parts and understand, understanding the balance and vocal parts and the energy that it takes and, and communicating that with students. So I really like the big ensemble numbers a lot. And then we're fortunate in Characterworks in that the, the ones that have solos, our, our leads that have the solos, will usually come prepared to practice that knowing the song. So that's good. So I get to really work on interpreting the song, acting the song, polishing the song. I rarely have to teach the song from the very beginning with any of our character work students. But the ensemble's number is, is probably what I, I would do that all the time if I could. You know, if they said, you do this, you do that, I would do the ensemble numbers. We're, we're halfway through the rehearsal process. So we are probably about 80% done with blocking and about 75% done with choreography because we want to be all the way through all of that in the next week or two so that we can start running things and working them and fixing spots. Right now we have all the bones of it but there's a lot more than just hitting your spot and saying your line. We probably have about probably about three rehearsals left before we're like finished giving everyone where they are. I personally have left just blocking for a few scenes which is just telling people where they are and what what line, where they move. And the choreographer still has a little bit of each of the three bigger numbers to do. So we're well into Munchkin Land, we're well into Merry Old Land of Oz, we're well into Jitterbug, but there's still choreography that needs to be taught in each one of those things. I believe all the music has been taught. Um, we have to keep reviewing it, making sure now that people have movement, that they remember those harmonies and those cutoffs, but it's been taught. I feel like we are about on schedule to where I like to be and where I generally am at this time. So I think we're right about in the middle, right on point for where I want to be. I wouldn't really say we're ahead, but we're certainly not behind. In the few weeks before moving into the theater, the cast does what Becky described. They learn the remaining material for the show and spent the remainder of the rehearsal process running, refining, and perfecting their performance. I wonder if any of those winkies do shoe repairing. One of the last things done before moving into the theater is the costume parade. The artistic team is shown all of the costumes used in the show, and they meet with the costume designer, Sharon Dintiman, to discuss the changes, alterations, and minor fixes that need to be put in place before showtime. My name is Sharon Dintiman, and I'm the costume designer. My job is to make the costumes support the show as a whole, 
So I go online and look at images of various productions to see the, the way they've interpreted them. Then I talk to the director about what their vision is so I can figure out what look they want. I asked Miss Dintiman what the purpose of the costume parade was. To dress the kids in the costumes that we've created slash pulled together for them and put them in the group where they belong in front of the director to make sure that the vision that she has in mind is what they're wearing and that also the costumes function in the way that she needs them to and for the choreography, for special effects, for tricks, for you know things that need to be figured out when you bring the whole thing together with movement, acting, choreography, tricks, flying, things like that. In Wizard of Oz, especially, Dorothy wears a cute little dress and is fine, but the three guys have these crazy, they're these crazy characters and they have a lot put on them. And they do so much dancing and there's so much physicality to their characters that the first thing we look at is function, is can they do what they've been working to do to represent this character to the audience. Because if all of a sudden we put the scarecrow in an outfit and he was stiff and it was tight and he couldn't move, then like you couldn't be the scarecrow. My name is Carson Burkett and I'm the stage manager for Wizard of Oz. The biggest uh, responsibility for a stage manager uh, is to act as the go-between uh, for the artistic team, so the director, the choreographer, the music director, uh, and the design team. Um, so that would be the scenic designer, the painters, uh, the props designers, costumes. Um, so while in the rehearsal period, I keep track of blocking. I keep track of specific notes. Uh, in this show with Wizard of Oz, we have a lot of flying, so I'm taking a lot of flying notes. Um, and then once we move into the space uh, for our tech rehearsals in the show, uh, that becomes my time. Um, so I take over the show a little bit. I deal with all of the technical aspects. Uh, and make sure that everything runs smoothly. And then when the show actually begins, I'm calling lighting cues, I'm doing flying cues, uh, making sure that everything that happens on the stage happens correctly. Big red go. Lights, go. This is the first show that I've really had to worry about flying. So that will be a new experience for me. So I'm trying to uh, wrap my head around that. I'm trying to keep track at least of Entrances, exits, just specific, any specific needs that we have for the show in the moment. There's not a lot that I will necessarily be in control of because I'm going to be, you know, delegating and relying on the flying team to actually make the flying happen. Um, but the more notes I can take on the specifics and details of the flying, the easier it will be for them once we get into Tech Week and performances. Tech Week, the longest week in the process. After nine weeks of rehearsing on the weekends, everybody moves into the theater to prepare for every aspect of the show. Every day for six days, the backstage workers, tech team, makeup artists, and flying committee work tirelessly in order to make the technical aspects of the show run smoothly. The first day of Tech Week for Wizard of Oz was completely dedicated to flying. As the actor's safety is the number one priority when using the flying equipment, the actors and backstage workers are trained by a professional. The actors are fastened into specially designed harnesses that keep them safe and secure, while also allowing for complete mobility and freedom while on stage. Meanwhile, the backstage workers are managing a series of ropes and pulleys that control the height, direction, and speed in which the characters fly across the stage. <laughs> How's flying, Jay? <laughs> Come back to me. <laughs> the next few days consist of slowly running through the technical aspects of the show in consecutive order. This is a long, slow, often stressful process, but it is vital for the success of the show. My name is Sarah Rawlings, and I am the hair and makeup designer for the show. Well, the process for designing makeup for any given show, uh, after I've had an opportunity to look at some shows uh, on video, or maybe show books, is to take like face schematics, like you might see uh, taped to the windows or the mirrors around here, and just start playing with drawing up some designs. So during tech rehearsals, we're testing makeup, we're checking it under the lights to see how it looks, to see if it reads the same on stage as it does during the rehearsal process when we were trying different designs out and then making alterations where we need to. With the rehearsal process complete, the show begins. On opening night, crowds file in and excitedly wait for the show to begin. Meanwhile, the director is preparing to witness her project, 
of the last two months finally come to life on stage. Before opening night, I'm generally a big giant ball of nerves. I'm nervous and excited. I usually am excited because we just poured all of my energy and creativity and thought into a project for two months. Um, it's exciting because you kind of get to see all of that come to a picture in front of you, but honestly it's a little bit scary. Um, but that's the best and worst part about being the director because it falls on you. It's a little bit vulnerable and nerve-wracking to have 400 some people come there to decide if they like what you thought. So um, it is very exciting and very nerve-wracking. Um, and it comes with a lot of adrenaline. Like I said, I usually don't eat that whole day and then I go home and eat something like super greasy or a bunch of ice cream like that night because it just like, it's like a huge breath. <laughs>